Hi, I'm Marty Shupak for Shupak Sports and T-Ball America. And welcome to our next T-Ball practice template. This is template number six. I'm gonna go through a typical practice. If you've been watching the templates, you'll see some of the drills are gonna to start to overlap. Uh, if I repeat certain drills, it's because I think it's in, those drills are important. Remember, you have the flexibility. You could change your practices around. I'm just gonna give you in these templates, a variety of different drills. Make sure also you have enough volunteers and assistant coaches and parents. I can't emphasize that enough, especially in T-ball. You'll see in T-ball kids, and not just T-ball, kids have a tendency when they see a bat laying down just to pick it up. It's a potential hazard and if they start swinging it with other kids around, the more parents, the more eyes you have on the field that are paying attention to the kids. I told my parents, once you're on the field, I don't want you conversing about the Yankee game last night or the Red Sox game tonight. I want you to pay attention to what you're seeing on the field. You're there for a purpose. We're going to go through a practice, but before we do, as usual, I'm going to start with a trivia question. Now, at the time we're filming this, uh, Aaron Judge just broke the American League record held by Roger Maris. That holds a special meaning for me because growing up, I was a Yankee fan. I attended a ton of Yankee games in the early 60s. I used to go down to the stadium by myself. It was one of the most enjoyable times and the most enjoyable memories I have. So this is gonna be a little bit related as far as a home run trivia, trivia question, okay? Since the 1920s, there has been only one decade where there wasn't a player to hit 50 or more home runs. I'll repeat it again. Since the 1920s, there's only been one decade where a Major League Baseball player did not hit 50 or more home runs. Think about that. Let's get right into the practice template number six. And afterwards, I want to get into my T-ball course and a couple of other things. I'm going to, in the middle of this, I'll have an advance uh, tip for all you coaches. But the first thing is, remember, you always want to start with a warm up. Very, very important. Again, I was guilty my first five years coaching, not really paying attention to a little warm up for my team. Very important to get the muscles going and we're building lifetime habits. But when these young kids become older and they continue to exercise, whether it's jogging, tennis, or pickleball, or softball. They'll be in the habit of warming up. After that, I've showed this drill before. It's the line throw drill where I set up the balls at shortstop and third base. When the kids are older, and this is a great drill to use if you continue coaching baseball or softball. But with the older kids, I put regular first baseman there, and I have a bucket and you alternate every three or four times. With T-ball age kids, all right, I use adults at first base. It just saves a lot of time. And half of the baseballs are not gonna reach them on a fly, which is a very important thing to relate to your players. It's tell them it's more important that the ball is in line to the first baseman rather than trying to reach them on a fly. A lot of times the kids, young kids will wind up trying to reach it on a fly, especially if it's their first year in T-ball. And what happened was, and I touched upon this in our throwing session, when they wind up, the head will go every which way and then the ball goes every which way. Our goal is keep the head as steady as possible, but you wanna to emphasize to your kids, you don't have to reach the first baseman on a fly. After the first person picks up the ball, throws it to first, he goes to the end of the shortstop line. Then he goes, he goes to the end. After he throws it to first, he goes to the end of the third baseman line. It goes quick. They get a lot of repetitions in a short period of time. It's a very good drill. Again, if you continue to coach baseball or softball when the kids are older, consider this drill as part of your repertoire. Okay, the next drill is 
and you might have seen this. It's what I call what's called the lead lead drill, and it's with a bucket of balls, and the players are lined up in a straight line, and the coach will throw them a fly ball. Now, if the kids were older than T-ball, I would say that they have to catch it. Because, because it's T-ball, we want to make the goals achievable. So you want to emphasize to your team, you don't have to catch the ball. You just want to make contact with it, with the glove. Okay? If you have players returning for a second year of T-ball or players that are a little more advanced skill-wise, divide this drill into two using an assistant coach and have that advanced line catch the ball. But all things being equal, you want to have your players T-ball age. They're running away and the coach will lead them. Uh, I can't get this done right, the pointer. Well, let me just use this. The coach will lead them and they have to try to touch the ball with their gloves. A couple of things. First of all, uh, with the young kids, you don't want them to run too far before you throw it. Give it a little height and throw it fairly quick. You'll get used to how far you have to throw it. Second thing is you want to have them run into the sun. And this is because when they look back, they're looking away from the sun. You don't want them to look into the sun. Okay, and remember, they just have to make contact with their glove and the ball. If you have bigger balls, use them. If you have regular T balls that are soft covered, incredible balls, definitely use those. Make sure they're approved by your league. Okay, all right. Next drill is a drill. I call this stop start drill. You're going to have some kids that have no conception of um, base running. So what I do is I take nine drop down bases. The drop down bases are those rubber bases, which I highly recommend you get a few, they're not that expensive. I drop them down. I have three lines and then I yell go and the players have to go and they have to stop at the next base. Now, this, these aren't really spaced wide enough. It's just for the picture. And then they yell, go, and they run, they stop at the next base. And these go to the first base. And then I yell, go, the players that are here go to the next base, then they go to the end of the line. So there's a lot of activity, a lot of movement. There's really no sliding in this, but what I like to do is on the last, I like to have like two turns. And then the second turn, I tell them to slide into the last base, okay? Again, this is the stop start drill. We're just, I like to isolate skills. So here I'm taking the bases out of the baseball diamond, putting it in the outfield, just so I could isolate the skill of base running. That's what they focus on, okay? Before we get to the next drill, I just wanna talk about an advanced coaching tip. All right, and it's something I began to do, not immediately, but when I was coaching 11 to 12 year olds, I began to, I guess it was my third or fourth year, document mistakes we made in games. If we played on a Monday and we had to practice Tuesday or Wednesday before our next game, I would document the mistakes we made and I would set the players up in the exact spots they were when the mistake, when the mistake happened, okay? Go over what they did wrong or what they have to do right and make sure you tell your players, I'm not naming names to embarrass anyone. If I na name your, you by name, it's to make you a better baseball player and a better athlete. This works. You can't spend a ton of time on this, but it definitely works. It's Again, I call it documenting mistakes. Another advanced tip is <clears throat> sometimes we teach it a different concept, really young kids, and they can't grasp it. If you change around a drill a different way, 
they might grasp the concept. Perfect example, when uh, you're teaching base running, a lot of kids, it's tough for them to understand, conceptualize first, second, or third and home, especially after they hit the ball, they're running the bases. You could explain it to them, but then you put another task involved and they can't grasp it. And I started painting first base red, third base blue. So the bases are red, white, and blue. Second base would be kept white. The colors of the flag. Some of the kids grasp this concept better than first, second, or third. Another concept, teaching a force play is tough on these kids. I learned that I used the term being pushed, which they understand better. So when I use that term being pushed, more kids understood, more new kids, what a force play was. So remember, take a concept you're trying to teach and change it around the way you're teaching it. You could be more creative than me. Okay. All right. Let's get to the, um, we're going to wind this up shortly. Let's get to the next drill. Next drill, I call, I just call it touch them all. And what I do is I line the kids at home and I have them hit the ball off the tee and I have them run to every base, first, second, third, and home. I make sure I have coaches, adults in the field, maybe a couple of kids, older kids, brothers. But what I want the coaches to do is I want them to coach them when they get to each base, touch the, touch the base and go to second. Okay, when they go to second, touch the base and go to third. When they touch third, touch the base and go home. No sliding in this. And after the first one player goes, the second player goes. I'm giving the players a chance to round the bases and also I'm reinforcing the name of the bases and which direction to run the bases, okay? Then again, I like to end all practices with a scrimmage. Don't deny your team having a little bit of a hitting off a of scrimmage. And you've seen this before. I like to set up my scrimmage first. I break it up. If I have 12 players, I have two scrimmages of six. I'll play like maybe one inning each, and then I'll get the team together and I'll have a scrimmage using the whole team, okay? And where it says TB, that's T-ball player, P is parent. I put parents or assistant coaches involved, all right? If you get your players together, a couple of hints, I spoke about this. I'm just going to mention it again. When you talk to your players as a team, keep your talking to a minimum, okay? The exaggerated coaching uh, lectures of, uh, of uh, Vince Lombardi and all the famous coaches, they never spoke at great length. Keep it short. And when you're coaching T-ball players, you as a coach wanna face the sun. And you also want to try kneeling down so your eye level is at the same level of, as the players. If you ha you're having them face the sun, what's going to happen is they're going to cover their face like this, and they're not going to be paying a much attention to you. So when you talk to the team as a group, remember, have them you face the sun, get down at their level. And I had said this before, a lot of times or you should do this every time, say to the team at the end of practice, if you're going to talk to them, okay, everybody meet at first base and then set up how you want to speak to them. At the next practice, you can do, okay, everybody meet at second base. It's a great concept reinforcing to kids the names of the bases. And uh, okay, so that's it for T-ball uh, practice template number six. Please, on Shoepack Sports, uh, go through it if you haven't seen the other templates. If you want the more advanced templates, I have the baseball and softball practice templates. It's up to you. If you only have a, a player in T-ball, I would focus on T-ball. But again, that's up to you. Keep in mind, if you want to take a deeper dive into T-ball, I have a course through a company called Udemy. If you go to my T-ball site, T-ball America, that's the letter T or T-E-E, -E, Ball America, on the first page, you'll see a registration. Go through it, see if it's worthwhile for you. 
you could wait when they discount the course to $9.95 or $14.99. It's well worth it because I give you access to two of my books, which cost more than that. So that's up to you. <clears throat> as far as uh, products, I would recommend, uh, let's see, uh, here we go. I took this practice right from this book, T-Ball Drills, you can get it at Amazon. You could get it at Book Baby. It has 110 uh, practice drills, a lot of which you could do at home. I highly recommend it if you get involved in T-Ball. It does come in an ebook. So if you have this uh, Amazon uh, unlimited Kindle, it won't cost you a penny, okay? Okay, that's, we're gonna wrap it up. Oh, well, let's get back to the trivia question. And let's see. Okay, only one decade since the 1920s did not have a 50 home run hitter. Which decade was it? Okay, the decade was the 1980s. There was not one 50 home run player. In 1977, George Forster hit 52 home runs for the Cincinnati Reds. In 1990, Cecil Fielder for the Detroit Tigers hit 51 home runs. So between 1977 and 1990, nobody hit 50 homers. And at the time I'm filming this just a day or two ago, Aaron Judge hit number 62. Congratulations to him. I'm gonna wrap it up. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you can, make a comment. If I don't mind if it's positive, I don't mind if it's negative. I wanna make these templates better for you, the coach or the parent. So until next time, this is Marty Shupak and I'll meet you at third base.